Hey everybody, brand new day. I just got back uh, from a walk with our two pups. They actually behave themselves, so I'm very happy. Along our walk, I found some beautiful leaves and they're basically two kinds, these maple leaves. And I'm not a really good person for like what kinds of trees are which, but I just wanted to show you that I grabbed like different sizes of these shapes. And so what I want to do um, with the painting behind me is to start to, uh, on top of all these drippy lines, is like the next phase for me is to continue to think about pattern. Uh, and I, I consider the lines kind of a cross between haphazard and drippy. I mean, they are that, but they're also, uh, they're also like setting up a rhythm and that part of it is sort of orderly. So, um, but there's underneath those orderly, somewhat orderly stripes are chaos, lots of chaos. So I'm still working on that uh, spectrum between total chaos and total control. Like I never want to be on either end completely. I'm trying to work my way into what feels like a comfortable center for me. And so my next step is to start thinking about shapes that I really like. And you know, these leaves I think are really great, but they're a certain size. I've got like three sizes of each of these shapes, but I'd probably want to scale up, you know, some of these shapes quite large, uh, even if they show in a very small way. Uh, the other thing that I did, I want to show you with um, my Posca marker. This was a gray. And gray is, you know, in my studio, gray is a great color. I love all kinds of grays. Uh, this is a gray, but it took me a while to shake, 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 shake it until it got to be that right, you know, like, what is this supposed to be? Is it semi-transparent, transparent, opaque, semi-opaque? I couldn't really tell. It turned out that after I shook it and shook it and shook it, it really is very, uh, I'd say, semi-opaque, semi-transparent. So I want to show you what I did on this canvas. I didn't record it, but I will show you as I just move this closer. And I didn't put a whole lot of marks on here because I was just really sort of experimenting, but um, you can kind of see, yeah, those gray marks. So there's black marks, white marks, and then there are gray marks. Can you see that? I'll just kind of scan. And what I did was I'm kind of putting these marks in a certain order, I don't want to say order, order, but it's kind of like a band, right? So there's a band of marks going horizontally there, another band, there's a band lower, and then there's yet another band below that. So I know you can't see that from far away, but I just wanted to show you that like those are my, those are also chaotic marks, but they're my asymmetric writing and I just love to have that. So what I'm going to do now is kind of just show you how I would make my own stencil out of those leaves. Okay. Okay, so I wanted to show you how I was gonna try and make some of my own stencils. And uh, I have a couple options here. This, first of all, is like a, a regular stencil you can buy. You can kind of see the flex of the plastic. They're obviously reusable. And, you know, they're great for all, you know, all kinds of mediums, spray paint and, and acrylic and oils and all those things. That's great, right? But sometimes you want to make your own. So this is Mylar and it has kind of a shiny side, you can see, and then it has a more of a matte side. Either side, you know, it doesn't matter. I mean, you're making a stencil, but you can kind of see how flimsy this is compared to, say this guy, which doesn't really want to bend, right? So this one really bends and this one doesn't. So one advantage, a couple of advantages I see of using something like Mylar is that number one, it is plasticky, so it's reusable. And then number two, it's so thin that it's gonna be easy to cut. Unlike say a material that's this thick, this would be a lot harder to cut, say that precise design, right? But out of Mylar, much, much easier. And then the third thing is that I discovered on that canvas behind me, I just tried this out. And because it's, it um, is very easy to create static between this material and the canvas, you just rub it like back and forth like this to create static, it clings to the canvas. And what does that mean? That means that if I do that uh, with my handmade stencil made out of mylar against the canvas, I can then I don't have to rely on, like there's a really good contact between the stencil and the canvas. And 
I could use spray paint. Um, the point is you just don't have to use tape. Now that could be an advantage. So that's one option. I'm gonna try it out of Mylar. And I was going to use these leaves that I picked up on my walk this morning to make my shapes. The other option though is the silicone mat, which again, very flimsy. I was gonna use it in my encaustic uh, table, you know, to, to allow the wax to drip on it, but it's, this is so thin, much thinner than I was expecting, that it's, uh, I was like, well, what else can I use it for? So my idea here is, again, it has uh, the ability to cling to my canvas, just like it would to a window. You just have to create, you know, go back and forth with it, and it creates a static so that it clings to the canvas. And again, you can use spray paint, and of course it's reusable, and probably fairly easy to cut because, I mean, it's really thin. So I guess uh, both, whether I use the Mylar or the silicone, it's kind of the same idea. So I think I'll start with the Mylar, just because that might be slightly easier to cut. So I'm gonna turn my camera down and show you how I would go about doing this. All right. So these are my tools. I've got something to uh, mark the leaves with. Uh, it could be a pen, it could be a fine marker, it doesn't really matter. And then I've got this blade here. A lot of you have the very same blade and it should be pretty sharp. And uh, I just wanted to also add that um, making your own stencils is and masks is such a great idea because you know these are your own handmade shapes versus, you know, like store-bought, they have a place for sure. And like, I'm gonna be using some of these on that large canvas behind me because I have some ideas. Um, it's not gonna be identical to this, but it's gonna use this as a reference because um, again, my, my love of sort of like oriental designs and pattern and gardening and botany and flowers, you know, this kind of falls into that category of, well, this is perfect, right? And normally I'm not all about perfection. So adding a little bit of what is perfect is great for what I'm going for, which is actually not perfection. Um, and also I just wanted to show you that like, these are some other shapes that I've made and, and I just collect them in the Ziploc and they're just ready to go whenever I need them. And the shapes are cut out of like crystal board in most cases, not out of plastic or, I could have done it, you know, with Mylar, but sometimes like I like to take an odd shape like, like this and just be able to, let me move this over here, um, you know, like trace it onto a, a canvas or panel and, and this because it's thicker, it's it's kind of a cardstock weight. And I find these, you know, very reusable. And like I've cut out letters and sometimes if I had to scale up or, you know, just unusual things like this shape, you know, not gonna find this in a store. So I've created my own shapes. I just wanna show you that it's really great to, to always be kind of thinking about, well, what shapes do you love? And create them out of like crystal board, cardstock, you know. All right, so my idea for this guy was just, you know, I picked up these leaves and they're fresh. Um, I could press them and they'd be nice and flat. But what I'm gonna try and do is just tuck these underneath and see if I can kinda, I can't see them very well. So I guess what I do need is to have white. So I'm taking these objects here and tucking them underneath and I can kinda flatten them you know, pretty well, just like that, just with my hand. And so then, um, again, here's the Mylar. I know it's hard to see, but you know, there it is. And let me just start with this one shape. I'm gonna try a pen because that's obviously the, the finest point. And that does pretty well. And I want this to be, you know, pretty accurate. So I'm gonna get all the little points of the leaf, cutting it out. I, I think maybe the marker might be better because um, because the leaf goes, you know, high and low underneath, I need to be able to capture that a little bit more easily. I think the, this marker works a little better, and this is just a Faber-Castell Pit Artist Pen, very fine point, the finest they make, I think, finest point. Okay, so this is kind of the beginning of my own stencil that I want to actually make uh, kind of a grouping, but maybe I'll start with single first. And of course you could buy a leaf stencil, but you know, when you make your own, it has meaning to you. 
Every time I use this stencil, I'll be thinking about that walk I took. And it was a great walk because they had dogs on the leash and they actually really did well. I'm trying to teach them to heal and like got in a lot of steps, got in 5,000 steps, I'm halfway there. How many of you walked a pet to get your exercise? <laughs> So I'm kind of ad-libbing here. Now, I don't know if I've ever made a stencil out of mylar before. Maybe a long time ago I did, but um, more recently I've been using Bristol paper, Bristol board they call it, but it's more like cardstock weight. And I think the Bristol board that I use is made by Strathmore, but there are probably other versions of it. Okay, so I'm trying to get all the little fine points and then I've got coming back over here you can trace this pretty quickly because it doesn't have to be exact and then getting the little stem that's where there's a lot of volume all right so then when I move that away that leaf see you can you can see that's pretty good and then to cut it you know I do want to see how easily this is going to cut. So I have my cutting mat. You can enjoy the music while I do this. Very easy to cut, and that's kind of the name of the game. Um, because this is pretty detailed, these little points, and I'm finding it easy to control the knife. I'm not pressing very hard. That's doing very well, so I'm very happy with that. Okay, so here's a little section in part of my painting. It's kind of in the lower right-hand portion here, kind of out of the way, because I want to test out a few things. So again, here's that positive leaf shape that I just cut out of mylar. The advantage being, you know, like anything, you can move it around and decide where you want to put it. This is what I was talking about, though, with the static electricity, right? Um, you can see that I don't have to tape it or anything, because like with a positive shape like this, if I needed tape, I'd have to destroy a section of the leaf shape, and I don't want to do that. So let's just try the positive shape first, like this. I'm just going to place it like that. And I'm going to be wearing um, a mask here and goggles, because I'm going to be using some spray paint. And I should be doing this outside, but I can't, because my canvas is on the wall. So the next thing is to get my can of spray paint I'm choosing this Liquitex um, Transparent Mixing White. Okay, I just need to keep shaking it. Um, I'm using Transparent Mixing White because, um, because I want it to be very faint. Okay, so here goes. Um, I did test out the tip. I did clean it out a little bit with some alcohol, but let's try it. Okay, so it fell, it's okay. But you know what? 
Um, I kind of like how faint that is. All right, well that's okay. I'm gonna let that one stay and flip it over so I don't have the same orientation. And let's put it down here. This time um, I'm gonna rub it again and see if I can get it to do a little better job of sticking just with static. Because my hope is that it'll stay the whole time I'm spraying, not just part of the time, but a little bit different orientation. But again, this lovely transparent mixing white, you see it's very, uh, not, not as opaque. So that, there we go. Okay, so I lift it up. It. There. Okay, so that's that's kind of nice, right? Because it's a little bit of um, realism amidst all the drippiness. Now, then there's also, I just created, like, I had to paint, I had to spray paint the negative shape in order to get the positive shape. This one, if I use this stencil now, which is the, the negative space of what I just cut out, you see how I can overlap it and now get positive and white which is pretty cool. So I can change the orientation, like maybe up here. And, and this is where you'd wanna like really play with the size. So by doing that, you can get a variation, a gradation here of how that's gonna look. Okay, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Thanks everyone.